All right, today I'm going to make use of one of watercolor's really wonderful strengths to do some botanical studies. And it's October, but in my garden there's still a lot of beautiful stuff just popping out. So I've got some a coneflower, a dahlia, there's some sedum, a couple of other different things. So I'm going to keep it pretty simple, nice clean background. I'm going to use a pencil line just to sketch in a few elements before I hit the watercolor. And then I think I would really like to get that really nice soft cast shadow on the, the flowers. I'm first planning some individual um, studies. And then I, I took a photograph actually of my little bouquet here, which I think is really sweet. There's so much here, different colors, different textures, um, different contours to, to play around with. Um, so I'm going to do a little kind of bouquet study at the end. So I think that's going to be really fun, really nice, and um, just so enjoyable with the watercolor. If you want to follow along, great. Take your time. Just um, remember that something that is feels like it might be kind of complicated, just break it down, simplify it as much as you can, and take your time and you'll get there. Okay, so I'm going to start in with this I think this is a, a variety of a kind of daisy. And I'm just going to start in. I, I, I want to just do a, a little kind of gesture of it and feel how I want it placed on the page and what, it, what is the outside border of where it's going to sit on my page. That's my first thing. So I'm going to get these main elements. So if I, if I think about this little cluster, the grouping of the, of the flowers sitting right in here, and the main, this kind of uh, the, the, the um, head of the flower here, and then here's this guy. And these stems, and then, then this little bud that's poking out in here. And the stems has these very, very delicate and interesting leaves. So I'm going to think about where those are sitting. Here's the larger one. They have a kind of serrated edge to them. Just a lovely contour. And this is a stem, but this this I believe it's a little it's a leaf. It's thin and delicate. And then I'm gonna think about these little individual petals, how they're coming around. the button of the flower here. That's nice. And then this leaf and that stem Get my hair out of the way. Don't want that to block your view. So this kind of study, it's just, it's really nice to do. And this kind of study helps me in, a, even if I'm planning a looser painting, that includes some flowers. Uh, just the, the careful study of the structure of flowers and petals, um, contours, the, their, their typical gesture, all of that, the, this kind of careful, more detailed study is, is always helpful to something, if I'm oriented to something looser. Because I really can't make those kinds of 
abbreviated suggestions unless I really have some understanding of the structure of whatever it is that I'm painting. We think we might be able to get away with it. <laughs> you think you could, you could, you could paint really loosely without really knowing, without having studied, without drawing. But oftentimes it just kind of comes in uh, as inauthentic. So you want it, you want it to be real and true, and you want there to be some truth there. So that care, this kind of careful study is, to me, the key to that, to really expressing that, that. All right, so there we go. So here's that, and here's this button up here. And then thinking about how, so these petals are kind of curling up on themselves a little bit at the, on the edges. And over, you know, how do they overlap? And how close am I to this other little bud here? And this, this see, this is overlapping. Now, right now, I'm primarily looking at my photograph, but you can, in fact, get this guy out and, like, really take a look at it. What's it, what's it really doing? And what, what's the structure? So this, this little flower, see how the, on, the, on the button, it hasn't, they haven't really opened up, whereas on this one, the, it's, it's very interesting how it's opened up. So all along here, so there's a little, little texture going on. And then here, the little yellow bits here. Gosh, flowers, the, the variety and the design, it's so amazing. Okay, so we can see that. And just looking at the, the, the little ends of the petals and the, the overlapping nature of them here. And then this one kind of comes down a little further. But looking at it, um, cl a little closer up, I can see that there are a lot more petals than it looks like in the photograph. The photograph's not revealing that to me. So I'm using both the photo. The photo helps me see the overarching design that I want to put on the page, whereas just grabbing this and taking a look at the, the actual flowers, letting me see that the really... Um, structure of what's going on. So it's not an either or proposition when it comes to, you can use both, you can use both your photo. So now I'm looking at this little, this little guy and I'm in the photo, I'm seeing it mostly like that, but it, it is helpful to look at it, to hold on to it because I can see that the, I, the brown part of the button, and I'm kind of seeing the underside. So I'm, I'm kind of seeing it from, from this perspective like this, um, which, and then these guys coming like so, which again, in the photograph, it's not totally obvious. All right. Good, great. I really love the, the leaves. They're just so elegant and delicate. 
And we've got this one. This one's curving down like so. And the little jagged edges to them. And they come to a point, this point. And at the point of these guys, there's this color at the point. And that's really pretty in the spacing here. So that's something to think about for the watercolor, um, getting that red, reddish edge on the, on the point. It's really neat. And then looking at the underside of the flowers, this structure here, we can't really see um, from this perspective. It's fun to, to know that it's there. Right, and then I just want to think about how I want this stem to meet up, and then thinking about where where these stems meet together. What is that structure here? Looking at it, what does it do here? Kind of does that, and. And that comes, and then this one, it has this, this leaf that does that. So that's, it's really good to pick this up and take a look at it. Because that's, that makes sense. And then this kind of curves up. is right in there, that, that now makes a lot more sense. And that, this leaf comes behind this stem right there. And then this one comes out of that structure. Okay, good. Okay, so I think I'm ready to start with some watercolor on this guy. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna start with some initial washes I think I'll start with the leaves because that's the most color that I'm going to want to put down. And um, for this, this guy, I think I'm going to stick at least, well, I'm going to start with my number seven Utrecht Sabalette. And I'm going to get some green mixes. I like this green that I see in the leaves. It's a nice, bright, kind of green. So I'm going to start with this kind of lemon yellow and um, my thalo. Now that's a little acidic. So I'm going to head. Um, that is Indian yellow right here. That's a little better. I still think I need how about some phthalo green light? Yeah, I'll start. I'll use this as yeah, this is not bad as an initial wash. I want to key orient this whole little sketch with with a light touch that's re reflecting the delicacy of what's going on here. So I, I'm, I'm not sure that I want to add a pen line, more likely a, a pencil line um, at the end would be, I think, more appropriate. And mix in a little bit of, um, let's see, that happens to be burnt umber in here because the stem feels a little browner, warmer, even even has some red right in here. Add a little alizarin. There's a kind of reddish, see that? Up that stem.
I'm going to bring this red all the way up, but what I'm going to do is I'm also going to drop in some green, so I'm going to get that mix. And I'll do the same thing here. Drop in the green. And this guy is a little bit more in shadow. It's a little darker. That's okay. I'm going to drop some green in this. And then I'm going to drop some red over here. That might be a little much. Let's see. I think it'll be all right, though. And for this guy, the smaller brush is nice. A little bit more control. bit of that red on the edge there. This is sort of the back side of this leaf. And this leaf is also a little bit in shadow. It's got that jagged edge there, but not all of it is in shadow, so I want to come in and get my brighter color right here. It's got a little notch in it. See how it's it's in, sitting in shadow. Might add a little. Oh, that's too much. Thalo is so strong. It's got to be aware of the pigmenting strength of the colors. So coming in like so. Nice. So I'm going to come in and just move up to this guy because it's, I don't want to disturb the washes of these small other leaves. So I'll come in, get some of those notches. And as it meets up with the stem, it's a little darker, so I can drop in a little bit more color, a little darker color. And the, the granulation of the paint is, is going to be nice because it's going to suggest those um, veins. I'll come in to these edges just ever so much to get that red. There's a little bit of red there. That's nice. And um, pick up this guy.
and it's kind of in, in cast shadow as well. Right here it's in, in the light and it gets a little darker so we can go ahead and, and there's a right here there's a kind of a vein and there it gets a little darker. It'd be nice to get that red in there as well, right here, and then the, that edge. It's so delicate. I don't want it to bleed too much, so I just want to easy does it on that. It's kind of cool. Maybe pull out a little bit. It's pretty yellow, isn't it? Maybe get a little more green in there. It's not quite that, not quite that yellow. Now we can move up to this guy. Also got that little red edge. Kind of curves around. Now this one. There's a little one here that I didn't outline and put it in. I'm going to get kind of an underside of this, a little shadow side. Nice. Okay, so now I've got a couple more of these little structures here. This guy is this curving around here. And it's definitely got a lot of red on the tip, so I'm going to get that. This is actually another leaf that's laying flat on the table top surface that I don't really see, but it's coming back around here, underneath here. And then we actually see its little tip right there. So it's overlapping. So those overlapping shapes are really important in any kind of painting, landscape painting too, to, so we understand where things are sitting in space. Okay, so now let's get this guy in, and this one will be in pretty good shape, I think, and then we can move on to the flowers. So this one, I'm using a little bit darker mix. I'm using the burnt, so what did I use, burnt umber? Yeah. I have my little 
cheat sheet here because it's, it is really hard to see the colors in the pan. So definitely a, a chart of some kind is really helpful for that. A little bit darker even. It's maybe a little overboard on the brown. I also have a, a little paper towel here that I use to take, remove some of the paint. So a lot of times I don't need as much paint, so I'm using that to control the amount of paint in my brush. You can also, so now I'm just removing some, a little bit more, um, I've got a little too brown there, so adding a little phthalo in there. Okay, so how about this guy? He's kind of coming, curling around. That he's, he curls and he's actually going right behind this one. So uh, the other thing, you know, it occurs to me in these studies, it's just really great to, just in terms of drawing and expressing the spatial relationships where things are sitting in space. Even in something really simple like this, there's a lot going on. Now we're talking about this being, this leaf curving back behind. It's kind of cur curling down here, kind of twists, and then it goes back behind this guy. Okay, I just want to make sure that this, again, that this, this little structure back here, this is a leaf that's lying flat, right, right in here. It's darker. Okay. So this is coming up through there. This leaf is casting a little bit of a shadow on top of this one. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to let this dry a little bit because I want to get that cast shadow. But I can get this guy in. So this, this leaf... It's got a pretty gesture to it too. It's coming. It's got this is a little bit of an underside of it. I'm gonna get that a little darker. And then it's pretty light. A little bit more yellow even. Because the light's really hitting the surface of it. comes up and right here there's a little indent right there it's probably a little more blue than I wanted a little more th uh, or strong phthalo green blue cast but I think it looks good so and it's very watercolor-ish, so there's that. 
Let me get this a little darker so that it really looks like it's underneath. So I'm, I'm, I'm what I'm doing here is I'm probably exaggerating uh, some of the values to really uh, express the the spatial relationships a little more clearly. All right. This gets a little darker. Okay, I, I'm happy with the leaves. I may want to come over with some l little bit of more of that red on the edges. That could be really fun to do. Um, let's see. Like just a little. I don't want to. I don't want to create too much of a line though. I I love what's happening in here. It's really, really fun. You know, watercolor is all about, you know, uh, uh, this dance of the control of it, um, controlling it versus letting it do its thing. Which is really beautiful. So we want that too. Like right there, I, I put my, I put my, fingers in it. So I'm going to clean that up. All right. So now let's play with those flowers. So, so, um, such an amazing little flower, simple, but wow. Um, so, okay. I've got that bright yellow. It's almost acidic in nature. So I'm going to come along into my tray here and clean up a little spot because I want to make sure I get a nice clean, clear yellow mix. Rinse out my brush really well. I don't want to mix any green into that mix. Green's not the worst thing to mix into yellow, but I, I want it nice and bright. And in fact, I'm going to come along into my pan and remove some of that green that I happen to get in the tray. So get that out. Now I'm going to come in and find that yellow that I want for an, an initial wash down. Now I can probably could come across the whole flower with a yellow, a yellow wash and that might be fine. I'm not definitely don't need to worry about going into the areas where I'm going to have red because I that it's just going to be if I do that it'll just be orange so that and that's fine because it's tending towards that right in here is a nice spot to get some wash in I don't want yellow where I, I, I'm, I want a nice, fun cast shadow on the white of the paper. So I, I don't want to use just a blanket wash of yellow. In other words, I don't want the yellow where I want those, that cast shadow to be. That's fun. Now looking at the um, this button right here in this guy, it's really um, it's kind of reddish brown. Um, I think a mix of like a kaput mortem. Um, this one. And maybe a little 
um, quinacridone. I think it'd be nicer to have it redder than browner. I also see quite a bit of, in, in a certain way, there's some purple in there. And there's also this little structure that's doing this that's around that button at the base. And then, of course, there's this sort of fractal thing going on. Probably not going to be able to get that. It's really small. But then right here in this guy in the center, there's... I'm going to go ahead and put a little wash. Now this is too red, but I'm, gonna, I'm planning on coming in with a little bit more purple. And then using that same, I'm going to use a little stippling right here to get, because this, this little button has now, on this flower, has opened up more. It's really interesting. And there's yellow in between there, so I can come back in with a little bit more yellow. I've got a little bit of eraser right there. I'm just going to come in with my X-Acto knife and pick that up before that wash dries. Wouldn't be the end of the world because it does have a little bit of a texture to it, but... All right. Now what's going on in, in this guy, you, you actually do see... Oops, that's okay too. I'm going to actually let that be. It kind of that's exactly what it was doing. It's kind of going right in between the all right, that's good. Now, how about some dioxazine purple down here at the base of this? Just dropping it in to get the kind of dark kind of shadow in there. And I'll do the same thing in here. Get a little form, even within that small structure. That is really cool. All right, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit before I put the red in for the petals. Um, Got a little bit more green right here for this. Right in here. There's a mixture of right there. That's good. All right, I think I can start thinking about those cast shadows. And I want them to be nice and luminous. And so heading to something on the lavender purple side um, is not a bad idea. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe some cerulean mixed in with the dioxazine purple. And so coming along and just thinking about what that shadow is doing. Now, generally speaking, you, you want to think about setting your something up like this that's got a one light source so you get a nice, strong, simple cast shadow. And I think I had a couple light sources here, but um, just in trying to get enough light, happening. But I'll try to represent this cast shadow with coming from one one direction. I'm 
still a little wet right here, so I'm getting a little bleed. That's okay. Get it? So if you come in, I'm going to wet the edge. You want to keep your brush clean as you're doing this. Right in here, it's pretty... pretty dark. And right here, the the leaf's pretty close to the to the table surface, so then it comes and it meets up right there. That's nice. And there's a little. idea that this does that. It's really fun to try to get. And the flower, it's a little darker here where it meets the flower. I'm just going to, I'm going to wait for this because I want to get the, the flower established a little bit better. So I'll swing back around to this cast shadow here, just trying to even it out a little bit in here. Here, I want to clean that up. Nice. Okay, so now let's get that color in for the, those petals. Also here, there's a little idea that this is in cast shadow. There's some color in here. That's pretty good. All right. I think that the, it's kind of a rusty red orange to me so it's bright it's pretty intense might be good to get a couple of layers where there, it's overlapping and curling up. Oh, that's nice. Right in here, there's some nice dark areas. So I think it would be fun to swing around with, with one more one more wash. I'm trying to get the little bit of the character of the petals. little little edges of right in here that are poking out. It's 
So I'm leaving a little bit of yellow right there. So I'm painting negatively to get those. See that right, right in here. Yeah, I'm definitely going to want one more pass with some darker red. And there's some cast shadows in here as well. That's pretty cool. Now for the cast shadow, let's see, I used the dioxazine purple and some cerulean. Which is nice. So now I want to come in and Get this guy. It's pretty dry, so I can Come in and get this right in here inside there. Okay, maybe a little stronger in the cast shadow now that I and it's touching the surface of the table right here. So that's where it's kind of emanating from. And diffuse it out a little bit. A little bit more. A bit more of the cerulean. This one a little stronger right here. That's too much. Nice. Okay, good. Now, so this whole petal is um, the the um, button is casting a little bit of shadow on some of these petals. So I want to catch that, but I need to wait for that to dry. So what else can I do in between while I'm waiting? Clean that up a little bit. I like that though. I like the leaves a lot. Um, I'm thinking a little bit on this one. It would be nice to have a little bit more of this edge so that I can tell that this part is the inside. So I probably am going to want to come over with a little bit of pencil line to say that a little shadow in here, a little darker side here. That's good, maybe. And a little more cast shadow in here. Uh, 
Oh, and there's one little spot that I feel like I missed in the um, one of these leaves. Right, right here, this is the underside of that leaf. Yeah, I want that to read that it's curling. Good. Make sure that's dry. It's not totally dry, but I think I can come in and get some of the darks of those petals. Mm, something like that I think will work really nice. Now over here, is the, where it's, the petals kind of in cast shadow. So I need that yellow that's right along that rim to read as cast shadow. So I'm going to get it, get mix up some green. Um, maybe some ochre. struggling to find that. Let's see, I think maybe like that. Okay, so right here. And then under these petals also Maybe not quite so green, maybe just a little, little less green, a little more ochre. Yeah, I like that. Now I think I lost a little bit of the dark on the in the middle of that petal or the button. That helps turn that corner. It gives it that form that we're after. Okay. I 
think that's pretty good. Now, if I want to, I can come in with a little bit of line on some of the, the leaves. Um, if I want to come in and get some of these veins, something like this. But I, I, I'm, I'm doing it pretty um, selectively. I, I, I don't need much. Some of the initial line that I put down uh, before I started the watercolor is still visible. So it, it, it's not as though this line is um, too strong or is standing out too much. So I think it's fine. And pretty light and sketchy and um, delicate. Okay. Now I may want to erase some of these little initial drawing lines. You can or not. It depends on the look you, you want. So I did this little kind of diagram-y um, sketch there. I think I'm going to, for right now, I'm going to leave it there because I think, you know, it's kind of fun to have the journey of your hand in a, in a, in a sketch like this So in your thinking. How, you know, how you thought about it, what, how you thought about conceiving it. So I, th I don't think it's bad to have any of that. And I'm not looking at this as a finished piece. It's, it's really study and th thinking things through. So the evidence of that, mm, I think, is really kind of nice. All right. Really good. Okay, so now I'm going to start in on some of my other other flowers and finally hopefully have a little bouquet sketch when I get all done. But this was super fun. I hope you enjoy it. All right. Bye. <laughs>